The new 208 is Peugeot's most important protagonist in years. A subcompact hatchback that hopes to win the hearts of global audiences and South African motorists, just at the time when the entire market is shifting towards smaller and more frugal cars. But the 208 needs to be extraordinary to make its mark in a very crowded segment. While price is one of the key factors, affordability is only one item on the wish list of aspiring purchasers. They want trendy styling, all the mod cons, brisk performance and miserly fuel consumption, but they don't want to spend a lot of money. Peugeot's European sourcing infers a level of sophistication not always reflected in its sales figures here. The 208 has by far the greatest volume potential in Peugeot's local lineup, so it needs to be a sales success and a worthy ambassador to the brand. The styling certainly has presence. In 1.6 allure flagship form as tested here, it has a robustness and athletic appeal that is particularly attractive. The designers have used finely honed style lines and details to give it an even more attractive shape. Gone is the gaping grill that was Peugeot's most recent attempt at creating a brand identity. Instead, the hexagonal meshed aperture has more balanced proportions. The multi-element headlight clusters, a deep front air dam and bright fog lamps add further appeal. The 208's profile strengthens the impression of aerodynamic efficiency thanks to a sloping roofline, sculpted flanks and smoothly accentuated haunches. It makes the hatchback look reassuringly stable and settled. The rear is perhaps the least memorable aspect, despite the prominent taillight clusters, but most of all, the 208 is unmistakably Peugeot, and attractively so, in a deft, premium car-like fashion. That sense of premium quality extends to the interior, which is both welcoming and surprisingly innovative. The large glass areas create an airy and spacious feel. The textures and surfaces have a strong sense of tactile quality, but it's the dashboard that is the main attraction here. Settle into the bolstered, instantly comfortable driver's seat and you'll notice how small the thick-rimmed steering wheel is and how it accentuates the raised instrument cluster behind it. It's an ergonomic arrangement that's not instantly intuitive, but that makes perfect sense once you've spent a little time settling in. Acknowledging current trends, there's no CD player slot. Instead, the system relies on USB flash drives, Bluetooth audio streaming and compatible portable music devices like the ubiquitous iPod for stored music. In that context, the 208's touchscreen display allows user-friendly access to the car's entertainment and telephony systems. The touchscreen display is an unexpected feature for a car in this price class, and it's standard on all but the most baseline of 208s. It's a way to control all the audio and communication sources in the car, and because it's touchscreen, it's intuitive to use not only while you're standing still, but also on the move. The Allure top model tested here is full to the brim with all the mod cons, and it also proves that small cars and safety are no longer mutually exclusive concepts thanks to six airbags along with ABS brakes. Accommodation is roomy by subcompact standards, and while rugby forwards will find the rear bench seat less than comfortable, normal mortals will fit in easily enough. The boot is average, but the full-size spare wheel is a welcome boon. The 208 is offered with a choice of two engines, both mated to a five-speed manual gearbox. This is the 1.6 top-end engine. It has 88 kilowatts of power on tap, together with a torque peak of 166 newton meters. Quite a frugal engine. The combined cycle fuel consumption figure 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, and the CO2 emissions rating 138 grams. A new generation three-cylinder engine offering 60 kilowatt and 180 newton meters from its 1.2 litre capacity. Both engines employ variable valve timing to smooth out unwanted peakiness and deliver decent shove across a wider rev range. But don't expect straight line fireworks from either. If anything, it's the three-cylinder that feels punchier in the mid-range. With a curb mass of just 970 kilograms, it comes as no surprise the car feels quite sprightly, even in 1.2 litre form. But this 1.6 litre is actually quite dynamic. The top speed, 190 kilometers an hour, perhaps more importantly in the 0 100 time, 9.9 .9 seconds. Certainly not tar-ripping levels of performance, but very much frisky enough. However, it's the chassis that shines brightest here. Despite a steering feel that's on the light side, the 208 feels reassuringly solid and composed. 
There's a pleasing plushness to the ride that adds more points to the comfort scorebook, but without robbing the car of vital agility. At speed, the chassis displays a reassuring tautness that comes in handy when caning the 208 through some mountain pass corners. Indeed, the harder you push the little Peugeot, the better it gets. It enjoys being driven with gusto and shares that joy with its pilot. As a package, the 208 surprises and convinces, while also addressing most of the important elements that entry-level buyers are looking for. Thus, it provides designer styling, a really comfortable, well-equipped and innovative interior, some lively engine choices and a lot of dynamic talent. Those are just the traits required of a successful subcompact while the pricing is competitive. At a five-year 60,000 kilometer maintenance plan and the Peugeot 208 sales prospects appear bright indeed. A willing engine, a decent set of ratios and a chassis that's good for a lot more urge make for a package that pleases in most respects. The premium interior is a pleasant surprise while the styling is handsome too, but the gear shift action feels sloppy and we can't wait for the pep of next year's GTI.